Hey, wonderful person. We're back here again talking about narcissists. And today we're going to talk about the key element with narcissists, insults. The narcissist's insults. If you've been around a narcissist at all, you know it's all about the insults. Now, before we get into it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get the message out. Let's let people know what this is all about. It really helps the channel out. I'm grateful for everybody that's subscribed and everybody who's going to subscribe. Part of a family we have going on here talking about, um, talking about narcissism, how it's hurt us, how we got over it, and how I'm going to button my shirt. <laughs> it's hot here. It's summer. <laughs> Uh, it's th these videos. I know they help other people and they help me too. They help me too. Even if I was a millionaire and I won the lottery, I might not put out a few videos for a few weeks, but I would come back to it because it helps me. It helps me beyond therapy. I don't go to therapy. This is my therapy. Okay, so let's get into it. Insults and the narcissist. Now, first of all, let's take a look at the healthy relationship. A healthy relationship does not have insults in it. The narcissist, if you live with a narcissist, they're going to tell you this is a normal part of a relationship. This is just how normal people argue. This is what normally happens. You, uh, we hurt the ones we love most. No, none of that's true. That's all false. You don't have insults in a normal part of a relationship. That's not how it normally goes. And you don't hurt the one you love most you help the ones and you heal the ones and you're beneficial for the ones you love most it's not a hate love relationship unless of course you're a narcissist so why do narcissists use so many insults well it's a way to devalue people it's a way to cut them down um you know it's the narcissist feels good about superiority. They feel very good. They want to be way more superior than anybody else in the world, especially the people that they live with. And devaluing them is a way of knocking them down so they can feel like they're way up here. That's the narcissistic supply. But it's also a point of control. If you are devalued all the time, if you are insulted all the time, you may start to stop questioning, stop asking what's going on or why are we doing this you may stop arguing you may stop even having thoughts of your own in uh, relationship to what the narcissist is doing and narcissists have a certain contempt for people that they need because they know if they were living with a person like themselves they wouldn't put up with it at all they wouldn't put up with the first sentence of it for the first thing, the first insult, they'd totally be gone. And the fact that you're still there, they, they find that re reprehensible, disgusting, contemptuous. And they have nothing but contempt for you because you put up with so much abuse. They don't value you for it. They, they are disgusted by you for it. And that disgust, that, that revulsion, that they have to people that put up with abuse like this builds up in them. And then they have to vent it and they feel totally entitled to vent it onto you because you're there. You're there for it. You're, you're be, you being there implies that you, to the narcissist, it implies to the narcissist that you consent to being a punching bag, a verbal punching bag for them because you're there. So you must be there for it. Now, let's just get the normal into the situation. Um, this is not a normal relationship. If you are having arguments and insults and put downs, it's not normal. That is not a normal. No matter what the narcissist tells you, that is not a normal part of a normal, rela healthy relationship. It's not. Um, a normal relationship doesn't have that. And normal, well, the narcissist tries to get you to think that insults are normal. What they're trying to piggyback on is that because we normal in a healthy relationship, we have 
ribbing and banter back and forth and we make fun of the little foibles that we have in our personality and the things we do, right? That's normal. That's actually healthy. That's a form of love. You know, I, I love you and accept you even though when you eat toast you crunch it down like it sounds like a, you know, like you're eating wood or something, right? Or you, yes, yeah, some, something of our personality and we make fun of it and we go back and forth on it. And that's actually a, a show of love. Now, the narcissist doesn't value intimacy. It actually sees intimacy as one of the weaknesses that you have. Uh, that's why you're still there and you're still putting up with so much abuse. And... Um, well, just to say that ribbing is a way, it, it, it's not this. And the narcissist is trying to, they're going to make it seem like their insults are some kind of normal ribbing, normal banter back and forth. And, but it's not because it hurts you. It's a verbal weapon and you can feel it like it's a bullet going into you, like it's a knife going into you. You feel hurt. Therefore, it is a weapon. And it's not normal. This does not happen in normal relationships. And you can tell the narcissist that. This is not how normal relationships go. You know, they'll try and gaslight you and say, what do you know? And you're not a psychiatrist or whatever. And you say, but you don't have any of it. Don't even discuss it. Say, no, 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 no. This is not what a normal relationship does. This is not healthy. And boom, done. And I've done that. And they have no excuse for that. They know that it's not healthy. And they know that's not normal. That's why they're gaslighting you that it is. Right? They wouldn't have to gaslight you. They don't have to gaslight you about gravity, right? That just happens. It, it's a, just a fact. So they don't have to put effort into making you believe that it's a fact. You only need to believe it's a fact if it isn't. <laughs> right? Welcome to gaslighting. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> All right, so... It's not a normal part of a relationship. And usually these, um, these insults are coupled with um, cursing and swearing and insults and obscenities. They're usually around that. And that gives them a, that helps give the insults more of an emotional impact on you. And they're trying to tra transfer what they feel the disgust and reprehensible feelings that they feel into you. It's like a venom that they're trying to inject into you. So when you balk, when you complain about the insults that you get from the narcissist, which are there just to put you in your place and get some kind of control, you'll say that they're not true in the beginning and then you'll, you might argue back. Now, the narcissist is going to have some gaslighting. They're going to gaslight around these to make it seem like it's normal. This is a normal thing that we do. But they'll also say, this is a common one, that you're being too sensitive. This is just normal. This is what happens in a relationship. Don't be so sensitive about it. Now, what they're trying to get you to do is just accept it, right? I said all this mean stuff to you. It's in your subconscious now. Now, just accept it and close the door Keep it in there. Don't pull it out. Keep it in there. That's what they're hoping you're going to do. And honestly, this has the effect of painting you as the problem here, right? They're insulting you. They're using words as weapons. These words are weapons, honestly. And that now they're going to paint you as the problem. You're too sensitive. You're, you're overly reacting to, don't worry about it. And this makes you the problem in the relationship. Not their uh, crazy behavior, not them acting out, not their insults and their uh, yelling and screaming. None of that, none of that. It's all perfect. You're the problem now, of course, because the narcissist is perfect. And another technique that the narcissist uses to gaslight you that these insults are okay is that, and sometimes they get you to think this and you to say this, that we should be able to do 
and say anything we want in an intimate relationship, whether it's intimate between, and intimate doesn't normally, it doesn't have to mean sex. It, it means between significant other people, even between, you know, platonic friends can be in intimate. They share their intimate moments and not necessarily sex. Come on now. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. I know every, our minds are programmed with certain words to always be used for certain things like relationships are programmed to always be romantic and intimate is always a code word for sex but it doesn't have to be that way and it, it with the language the way it is it isn't that way that's just not what the definition actually is so now <laughs> before i go too far off the mark yes the narcissist likes to uh, muddy the field and what i mean by that is that they like they you to bring down your boundaries a relationship is healthy boundaries in a real healthy relationship there are things you never do and things you never say period end of story there's no excuses none for some things and the narcissist is like no you should be able to say whatever you want to say or do whatever you whatever you have to say and have to vent because that's what we do so yeah it hurts but it, it's to you know it's something that relationships have to do or they'll say it, you know it's normal this is just me venting don't worry about it. don't be so sensitive about it no 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 that's not normal that's not what we're doing here and relationships have healthy boundaries this is some things you never say in a relationship you don't look for a person's intimate vulnerabilities and bring that up, like how they look like when they're naked, if you've seen them, and then to bring that up, or how they feel embarrassed about something at their job that they happen to confess to you, right? And this is why you can never bring anything up. This is why you need to gray rock a narcissist, because if you don't, if you bring up, if you let them have any juicy information, they will always use it against you because they're your enemy. They're your adversary and your adversary is always going to use what they can to knock you down. You're not giving it to your significant other, to your wife, to your husband. You're giving it to the opposition and they're going to use it against you. You're going to find yourself in an argument and then they're going to hit you out of the blue with this horrible thing that you didn't want to ever hear out of anybody else's mouth coming out of their mouth because they, they can win the argument now. And not only win the argument, but now they can upset you, throw you off your game, and then hopefully in their mind they're thinking, I, I taught them who's boss, I'm boss. They're going to listen to me now because they know I know how to hurt them good. Insults, that's what you get from the insults in a narcissist. But I just want to make sure we don't, in a normal relationship, say anything we want to say. We have boundaries. There's things we never do, things we never say, we'll never say, and we'll never do, period. That's what makes it a healthy relationship. Um, like I've said before, healthy boundaries are a healthy relationship. Uh, if you had a pool and you have a backyard with dirt in it, right? And the boundaries for the pool are melted away. What happens? You have a big backyard of mud. That's not what anybody wants. Well, maybe the narcissist. But healthy boundaries keep the clean water in the pool and the, the soil for the backyard, for the grass or whatever, in the backyard. Healthy boundaries. The boundary at the ocean keeps the ocean in the ocean and keeps us on the dry land. It keeps us all healthy. It keeps everything functional and beneficial. That's what healthy boundaries do. The narcissist will try and eat that away and try and get you to pull down your, your healthy boundaries because the narcissist realizes that your healthy boundaries will prevent them from controlling you. Yeah, and if you spend too much time around a narcissist, you'll start to incorporate these insults into your subconscious and into your identity and into your mind. You'll actually start to use them, these insults, in your love language, how you express love for things. You'll find yourself cursing more towards um, beneficial things that you like. Instead of saying, wow, I really like that, you'll be like, I really effing, you know, this, 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 like that, right? Because that's where you got it from. You didn't get it from childhood. You got it from the narcissist. 
And you got to watch out what you get from the narcissist. It's not a clean source. It's a toxic source. And that's what we call picking up narcissistic tendencies. You don't have to be a narcissist to use narcissistic tools. You can take their tools, just like it's a hammer or a screwdriver, and put it in your tool belt and use it. And you will if you spend too much time around them because you'll start to think this insult stuff is normal. And you'll start to use it more in your job life, your personal life, your love life. You'll use it all over the place because it is your normal now because you live in this psychological battlefield of the narcissist's making. And eventually, if you live through it long enough, you'll even start to build your identity around the insults that you regularly get from the narcissist. You'll start to think maybe they are true. Maybe because I've been called lazy so much, I'm lazy. You know, maybe I am lazy. Or you might even make the leap to say, you know, I guess I am lazy. I, you know, I watch an hour of TV. I'm a lazy bum, right? The narcissist can get to you. It's a dangerous and toxic environment, as we've always said. But this is true, and this is what happens, and this is how it happens. All these insults come at you so fast and so uh, abundantly that it's hard to deflect them and um, not incorporate them into your being after you've been there for a certain amount of time. Some people have been putting up with narcissists for decades. Decades. That leaves a mark. Yeah, that, that goes deep. That cuts deep in ways you don't even know. And these insults aren't always done by words, calling you a name, lazy, or whatever it is. The, the narcissist really doesn't care what they call you as long as it impacts you, as long as it throws you off your game and gets them into control somehow and increases the narrative that they're a victim and that you're whoever is the uh, perpetrator of all their miseries and, and problems, right? Yeah, but these insults aren't always done the, the narcissist has been perfecting insults and put-downs all their life. If they're like 60, 70, they, they have had decades of experience in putting down people in very creative, sly, and effective manners. So not all of the insults are verbal. There's body language. There's how they um, communicate. To you, they could say the words that they say to you can be completely um, uh, good in a way, right? But the way they said it to you puts you down and puts you in your place. You know these things if you've been around a narcissist. Um, sometimes they're dismissive. Sometimes they're, and the words that they use, the actual, like if it was a script, it would seem like it's not so bad, but the way they use it makes it a weapon. And you can feel that weapon. You can feel that pain. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can feel that bullet of that word go in. So don't gaslight yourself and think it's normal and it's okay. Because if you feel that go in, then it's toxic. It's in there and you need to do something about it. <laughs> what? That's up to you. We have, you know, <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I have notes to follow people. I have notes because I go way off topic, way off topic. So your relationship with the narcissist isn't going to last forever. You know this. You feel this. It's going to die. It's going to go away. Like I always say, one day you will be on the other side of this relationship. Period. End of story. And it's going to die by a thousand cuts. All these cuts that the uh, narcissist uses in these um, insults are cuts to you and cuts to the relationship. And the relationship gets cut down, cut down. Even if you withstand all this nonsense and all these insults, the relationship is cut to shreds and it just dies away. And this doesn't always come from um, the angst that they have building up inside them. It just comes out of the disgust that the narcissist has for intimacy. The fact that people can be want to be close to this reprehensible person. And they know they're reprehensible. They know. They, they coach it. As, they, they gaslight it as, um, I'm difficult to get along with. <laughs> difficult. Difficult doesn't even cover it. 
Difficult doesn't even cover the scratch on the scratch of the tip of that iceberg. And they know it. Oh, they know it. They see it. They have eyes. They have seen all the BS manipulation and horrible and traumatic things that they have caused on other people through their whole life that you don't even know about. You know, going back to grade school, they know about all these things. And they have gaslit themselves to this point in life to be able to stand up proud and say, I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Because they've gaslit themselves to that. But in, on the inside, they know it's a just a horror show of shame. Shame. It's just awful. And that's why they need people in their lives to gaslight, to gaslight themselves into coherence. Because if, that, if they don't have anybody else in their life, it just falls back on them. And that shameful life that they have led and the shameful people that they are is all they have. They can't gaslight so much. And now that, that superiority gap they have, it doesn't exist anymore. There's, you can't be superior against nothing. And it's just all shame. But again, I'm a little off track, but that's what it's all about and where it comes from. And don't gaslight yourself into thinking this is all normal, as I've said before, because that can be a thing too. And then you gaslight, ah, oh, you know, this is normal. Uh, this, this is, I, I can put up with it. I can deal with it. Or this is kind of normal, what a normal relationship is like. It's not a normal relationship. It's definitely not healthy. Okay. And it's toxic. And what you're doing by normalizing it or gaslighting yourself, coaching yourself into thinking that this is a normal relationship and it's okay, you're coaching yourself to be a victim. Yeah, you know, you're kind of leading yourself, you know, this is okay, and this is okay, and this is okay. So maybe everything is okay. Maybe it's okay that I'm a victim. Yeah, it's not so bad, right? Is it so bad? No, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible, and you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it, and you know you don't deserve it. You wouldn't be watching this video if you, <laughs> right? If you've been abused by narcissists and were okay with it, you wouldn't be watching this video, right? You'd be watching cats and goats and whatever. But you've been injured and you need like this kind of therapy. I know because I'm here. This is therapy for me too. I've been through it all. I've been through the grinder. Right, I've had the narcissist in my family. I've had the narcissist mom. I've had the narcissist boss. I had the narcissist grandparents. Okay, I've had the the narcissist show. I got the T-shirt. I got the whole thing. Right, I've been there. I'm on the other side now, and I'm living life great. I'm not, you know, a billionaire or something. I'm not flying out on jet skis and stuff. But it's a whole heck of a lot better than living with a narcissist. And I think one of the top healing points that I had in my journey was that I realized that I was talking myself into being an okay victim. I mean, if you're victimized by the narcissist, you're victimized by the narcissist. You do the best you can. You know, you're trying to build, build your, and, and, and get on with your best life. You're just doing what you can. But don't try and coach yourself into being more of a victim, okay? This is not okay. It's okay to realize that. It's not okay. And it's okay to feel not okay. It's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to regret where you're at in life and where this relationship has gone. It's okay to do all that stuff, right? That's what normal people do. That's what normal people do. Right? The narcissist, the narcissist isn't going to do any of that stuff. The narcissist doesn't like introspection. It sees that as a weakness. Right? The narcissist sees introspection and intimacy and vulnerabilities as a vulnerability. Right? They're on this mental battlefield. Everybody's out to get them. You don't want to be vulnerable in a, on a mental battlefield. And they see all that as a vulnerability. So they're not going to be um, looking at themselves and um, introspection and 
all this other stuff that we do. We, it's okay to do all that for yourself because that's normal. And even though it doesn't feel good at the time, you'll grow, you'll, right? The next day you'll get up and you'll be a little bit better than you were the, the previous day because you've, you've tackled the tough things in life and you grew beyond it, even though you don't feel like you grew beyond it. I'm telling you, on the other side, you will know that I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you that God's honest truth, man. It, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to get through. But you can get through it. And it doesn't always take a lot. Some people, it doesn't really, the narcissistic abuse doesn't stick as much. And some people, it sticks a whole hell of a lot. So, uh, you will get to the other side, believe me. And you will. You won't have to put up with narcissism forever. Let me just say that one way or another, you won't have to put up with narcissism forever. There is a light at the end of that tunnel. It's coming. And you will say goodbye to this narcissist and this narcissistic relationship. So you might as well start healing now and realizing the truth of the relationship that it is a disturbed and toxic relationship. And one good way to realize the truth of any relationship you're in, um, right? Because you want to weigh the good with the bad. So, like, if you're in a relationship with one of your friends and, um, uh, or, or a husband, a husband or wife, Let, let's say I'm the wife, <laughs> it's the husband, right? And the wife, this is a common complaint, kid, uh, guys, <laughs> right? Uh, and she'll say, well, I love my husband and I have a relationship with my husband, but he could help around the house a little bit more. He could take out the garbage you know, so I don't, it's heavy for me. Yeah, that's the but in the sentence. That's the but in the relationship. Now you do that for all your relationships and it'll start to show you almost like a breakdown menu of what's really in the highlights that are really in your relationship. So if one of your relationships looks like this, I'm in a relationship with my wife, but it's nothing but insults and put downs and arguments. Oh, that is a big, fat, screaming red flag that you're in a relationship with a narcissist. Don't let it be anything else but the truth. The truth is, you just said the truth if you say anything like that. And that lets you see both sides of the story. With all your relationships, you could do it with your job. The, the but. I like my job, but the people there bother the bejeevous out of me. Okay, now is that a bad job? No, I can put up with that. And they're hiring other people and I can stay away from the people that bother me. Okay, but you got to see the level, the, 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 the both sides, the good and the bad, uh, the both sides of the coin with that but. Use the but. You won't always want to use it, right? <laughs> but it works. So now what? You realize the relationship and you realize what abuse looks like and all these insults. Well, that's up to you. It, not everybody's able to just leave a narcissist at a whim and say, well, this isn't working for me and leave. You know, they have kids, they have money situations, they have religious situations, they have all kinds of interwoven inter decisions to consider when leaving the narcissist. Not everybody can just leave, unfortunately. Um, there are a lot of strategies that I outlined in all the other videos and a lot of other people outlining in their videos to deal with the narcissist. Um, but what you do with your relationship with the narcissist is completely up to you. Um, my thing was <laughs> the three distances, right? I always talk about the three distances, physical distance, psychological distance, and um, mental distance. And I was always about the physical distance. I always needed the physical distance because once you get this distance, all the rest start to heal themselves as well. Uh, but that's not available to everybody. And not everybody wants that. Some people want, you know, there are narcissists that are only 10 or 20% narcissistic. They only are triggered into the narcissistic space about 10 or 20% of the time. Sometimes you can work with people like that. Sometimes, if they're willing to go to therapy and take medication on a regular basis, that can actually work. Yeah, so it depends on whether you want, you know, that is that relationship valuable? 
enough for you to go through all that because it's not going to be easy. Nothing with the narcissist ever is. But sometimes it's better than just dropping everything and going on to who knows what. Now, before, you know, making a decision when you're coming out of a narcissistic relationship or when you're leaving the end of the narcissistic relationship or when you're in a narcissistic relationship that's been going on too long, you don't have a good sense of your own abilities, your own worth, your own confidence. And so you you almost always prefer to stay with the narcissist, almost always. And this is why psychiatrists and psychologists see people that wind up in on their sofa or whatever. It's not always a sofa. But <laughs> um, in their office that have been staying with the narcissist for crazy long amounts of time, even though they were intelligent, capable people. Because the narcissist runs down our confidence and our perceptions, our ability to see how things can, we can do things to forward ourselves either away from the narcissist or forward in our lives. And they also debilitate us in our emotions. You get, you, you'll have guys coming out of narcissistic relationships that are pure anger. They can't do anything without anger. They are just angry, 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 angry because <laughs> they've been with a narcissist for a long time. Um, yeah, so it really is a debilitating situation and you're trying to make a decision from that. Ugh, it's a mess. It is a mess. My thing, I'm telling everybody, is to get away as much as possible. I did the gray rock stuff. I did the arguing stuff. I tried a whole lot of stuff. Eventually, the uh, the narcissist I was, uh, I was having to live with having to live with again see no I'm not <laughs> I didn't have to do it but I felt it was a moral thing to do um, passed away and whew, wow it's and somebody just recently said wow I guess you miss your mom because my mom was the narcissist and I was like let's just say everything everybody's doing very well now <laughs> everything is the way it's supposed to be now no shade to my mom now in heaven right, or whatever, <laughs> uh, but the narcissist here croaked, and I'm done with that one, I'm done with that one, not done, I, I, you know, my beliefs on the afterlife are mine, and I cast no shade on the person that goes afterwards, you know, if there's an afterlife, I, I, that's it, that, that person is fine with me, because you can't be an a-hole in heaven, right, <laughs> there are no narcissists in heaven, um, so yeah, it's uh, a difficult way to make a decision and not everybody gets to make that decision. Usually, um, something catastrophic happens at the end of the relationship because the narcissist has a really great grip on the person that they need and it does, just doesn't break off. Even if the person breaks away and gets away and leaves for a while, the, the, the relationship broke up. The narcissist uses their flying monkeys to go around, run around them and bring them back in a lot of times. So it's a very sticky, hard to get out of situation. But whatever you do with that, I'm, I'm hoping all this information helps and helps your life and helps you make decisions moving forward that are healthier and more beneficial to you and to everybody involved. Because when you're healthy, you can help other people. You make the world a better place when you're healthy and you're in a better place too. Okay. So I hope this helps people. Let's get on with living our best lives as best we can.